The Los Angeles Times has published a piece indicating that six women have spoken to the reporters, Amy Kaufman and Daniel Miller, implicating Brett Ratner in sexual harassment or misconduct cases. Now, these are women who had been silent about what they had gone through previously and decided to come forward following this domino effect that the allegations against Harvey Weinstein have had. Now, there are a number of women. I'm I'm going to do my best to detail all of them. But first, I want to start with Olivia Munn because Olivia Munn had written something about Ratner in her book back in 2010, although she didn't name him. And you know, the, the allegations that she's now detailing are horrendous. So here is what she had to say about it. She had alleged that. Back when she had first moved to Los Angeles to pursue acting, she was working on set for a movie that Ratner was in charge of. He was the filmmaker for that movie. I've got the exact quotes here okay. from the Los Angeles Times, which did a great job of reporting on this story. Olivia Munn said that while visiting the set of the 2004 Ratner directed After the Sunset, when she was still an aspiring actress, he masturbated in front of her in his trailer when she went to deliver a meal. Munn wrote about the incident in her 2010 collection of essays without naming Ratner on a television show a year later. Ratner identified himself as a director and claimed that he had, quote, banged her. And now let me go to Ratner's quotes about that, which were all lies, and we'll explain that in a second. He said, I used to date Olivia Munn. I'll be honest with everybody here when she was Lisa, and that was a name. Uh, that he claims she used. That was the problem. She was an Asian back then. And he went on to say, I banged her a few times, but I forgot her. Days later, he went on the Howard Stern show and admitted that he had, in fact, never slept with Munn. Yeah, um, he was quoted as saying on Howard Stern's show, I felt horrible. I said I banged her three times, which wasn't true. So um, back in 2010, we actually covered this story, and it was because uh, Ratner had used a gay slur. And when he uh, had used that gay slur and got criticism for it, uh, Olivia Munn's book also came up. and. All of the reporting about it made it seem as though they had some sort of consensual sexual relationship with one another and that Olivia Munn went on to say disparaging things about him in the book. She made comments about his penis size and we talked about that. And again, for for those of you who might have missed that story because it was seven years ago, we were under the impression because it was reported over and over again that they had a consensual sexual relationship. Entertainment Weekly specifically said that and then later retracted it after Radner made it clear that he lied about having sex with her. So they did apologize for it. Entertainment Weekly incorrectly stated in an earlier post that Munn says she dated the unnamed actor. We regret the error. Okay, so based on that false reporting, erroneous reporting, we commented on it, and I unfortunately called Olivia Munn classless because I was under the assumption that she just said disparaging things about him after having consensual sex. They never had sex, he had harassed her. I did not know that, I'm not giving myself any excuses at all under any circumstances, and I feel horrible. Our commentary was based on bad reporting, and I should have known better. Well, okay, so first of all, the most important thing here is that Olivia Munn was completely smeared, and it's horrible. And and so the, the way that it went down, as Anna explained, is first Brett Ratner lied about what happened. Uh, and she had actually the class to not name him in the book, even though he had done something terrible to her. And the more of the details of that story, now that it has fully come out, is that she was new to Hollywood. They told her that he wasn't even gonna be in the trailer. They're like, can you just deliver this meal to the trailer? She goes in, thinks it's empty. He comes out with a shrimp cocktail in his hand, naked, masturbating, and uh, and and finishes there. Uh, and she's like, what in the world? And she screams as she runs out. Afterwards, he lies and says, oh, yeah, I banged her, as you, as the, in the quotes that we read to you. Now, when we did the story seven years ago, Ratner had not admitted that he had lied, and there was incorrect reporting that she had said that she did have sex with him, which is totally false. That it's she not had true. That she dated him, not just sex, that they were dating. Yeah, so and so based on that, that incorrect fact pattern, we said, wait, if you dated the guy and and now you're calling out his size, etc. That's wrong. Right. Okay, but we had the wrong facts. So now that we 
see the full facts at here. And like, like I said, LA Times, wonderful piece of reporting, not just from Olivia Munn, who has three different people corroborating her story from at the time, not now, and five other women also with corroborated witnesses at the time, not now. Okay, now we see that in fact it was Brett Renner who was lying all throughout and had done all these terrible things. And 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 Olivia Munn uh, was the one who was the victim uh, undoubtedly and had to suffer through this and then have to deal with the Ratner saying all these terrible things for all these years. Yeah, and, and look, I think, not I think, I know that the MO for these types of people, these types of predatory individuals is to smear the person that they victimized. And um, look, even though it was false reporting, I feel terrible um, that that I fell for it. And I just wanna be clear about that because I feel like I should have been more skeptical, first of all, of Entertainment Weekly. And I should have done a better job um, in covering that story. So I just wanna be clear about that. Now let's move on to um, other women uh, and the accusations that they have made against uh, Brett Ratner. One of them is a uh, model named Natasha Heinstrich. And uh, she said that when she was 19 years old uh, and Ratner was in his 20s, uh, he prevented her from leaving his apartment after watching a movie. And uh, her accusations are so disturbing. He strong armed me in a real way, way. He physically forced himself on me. At some point, I gave in and did his thing. She claims that he had forced her to perform oral sex on him. So look, I wanna talk a little bit more about the courage of these women because Unfortunately, still in today's society, there's great shame and oftentimes embarrassment, and even if it's a situation you can't control. And um, and it takes so much courage to come out and say this happened, and I was an unwilling participant in this. And for uh, Henstridge to come out and say, yeah, it happened, and I'm not gonna take it anymore. For Olivia Munn to say, look, in the beginning, she was actually trying to hide his identity, uh, and she was doing the right thing. And now saying, look, enough is enough, man. There was another incident years later, Olivia Munn runs into a Ratner at a party. And he's like, oh, why do you hate me? Gee, I wonder why, Brett, I can't quite tell, right? And and he's, she says, well, I'd say dislike, being again- Super nice. Super nice. <laughs> considering right? the situation. Right, and he says, well, I mean, I, I'm so nice to you. I bought 10 magazines with your picture on it and masturbated to it. Okay, and talked about ejaculating on the covers of the magazines, yeah. etc. By the way, corroborating witnesses at the time at the party that hears him saying that. So uh, for her, and so Olivia Munn, very rightfully so, coming out and saying, no, I'm not gonna take it anymore, and we all shouldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I love the strength and courage of these women. Uh, and so uh, there's there's many others here, and it's about time that, that, that everybody fought back. and. And I and I I agree with Anna. I feel terrible that in the beginning the the story was incorrectly reported, and then uh, and we took the wrong facts and and had and the commented and reacted to it. Yeah. And, and and look, the the worst part is I know from personal experience what it's like to be lied about in the media, and then have people pile on um, based on something that's not true at all in any way, shape, or form. And to know that I played a role uh, that's similar to that in any way makes me feel horrible. I would never make excuses for any type of sexual predator. I feel terrible if if she ever saw that video or or you know thinks that we have that type of mindset because we don't. Okay. Um, anyway, it's this is this is a very humbling experience um, for me personally and. It, it makes you realize you gotta do better. Another actress uh, by the name of Newman says that uh, she encountered Ratner in, a 2000, in 2005, um, Jamie Ray Newman to be specific, encountered him in 2005 when they were uh, both in first class on an Air Canada flight. The filmmaker swapped seats with his assistant before departure so he could be next to her. Within five minutes of the plane taking off, she said Ratner began loudly uh, describing sex acts he wanted to perform on her in explicit detail. So he was so loud that other people on the plane allegedly heard what he was saying and she was incredibly uncomfortable. And obviously they're on a plane uh, and she can't get away from him. And uh, he took complete advantage of that opportunity. Uh, he was graphically describing giving me oral sex and how he was addicted to it. Look, there are acts that are uh, uh, 
despicable and there are acts that are illegal. And so I, I don't understand guys who, who do this stuff. I guess that they think that they, they're used to wielding their power. Especially on a plane, people can't get away from you. They, they have to sit next to you for God knows how long. And on this show, we had a co-host who told about how she was sexually assaulted on a plane. Um, and, and women have to deal with being hit on all the time, nonstop. Um, but then Ratner, on top of that, the things that he did to Henstridge and Olivia Munn, which were non-consensual sexual acts. It's just there's no end to uh, to this. He brags about how his best friends are the the director Toback, who mm -hmm. just who is also facing um, allegations, allegations from 300 incidents. 300. And he also brags that one of his best friends is Roman Polanski. Who brags about that? So you, when you read the entire LA Times story, it gives you great context into what happened. And and beyond just Ratner, it is unfortunately it appears endemic. Uh, to uh, not just Hollywood, but to society. That men in powerful positions, whether it was TV like Roger Ailes, uh, Bill Cosby, uh, and Brett Ratner and Harvey Weinstein uh, took advantage of those positions far, far too often. And, and not just in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, but all the way up until now. And, and I think that it's a wonderful phenomenon that women are coming out and saying no more. Help us build independent media together, tytnetwork.com slash join.